there. So this is the review for the next stage in the Hydrovolt Hydroponic Rotary Garden development. So you can see what did grow in there in uh, 34 days. So this is from the like planting of the seeds to actual lettuce. And you can see there's so many lettuce, so much lettuce that I have to cut it. Uh, yeah, and so there are different kinds of different kinds of seeds. So those are all different types of lettuce that grew in here. Uh, yeah, in the course of like about a month. Uh, yeah, and you can see that some of it has grown big and probably too big for the system. Uh, yeah, so now I'm like cutting it. Uh, yeah, so uh, there there has been like a couple of really major improvements in this version. So uh, yeah, first of first of it is the new cell system. So I use the uh, air duct air duct pipes with laser cut grates to hold the uh, uh, rock wool inside. Uh, yeah, and in like, and the wheel has been cut to size uh, of the tray. So I'm using like standard plastic tray. Uh, uh, yeah, which is like 600 by 400 millimeters. So the wheel has been adjusted to fit this size. So it became uh, like uh, shallower. Uh, yeah. So it stayed the same diameter, but. It became shallower, so and now they're planted more densely. So maybe so that's the reason of this like overgrowth. And you can see that the leaves are not too big because uh, they couldn't really develop uh, because they have too many uh, too many other species close to them. And you can see like with this salad, it it, uh, it has bigger leaves and it grew like. Small. It didn't grow that tall and it grew denser, so probably depends on like which kind of seeds are you going to use. And some of them are better for like I don't know, field or other type of hydroponic systems, and some of them are better for mine, like this one. And you can see it's really nice and has still has room to grow. And I will cut this stuff and I will leave it like for a few weeks more, see how it develops. Yeah. So yeah, the so here you can see the new tray. Which is a pretty standard plastic tray and it works really good. Um, the other upgrade is the capacitance level sensor. So in previous version, I used the floating uh, sensor and I thought it was it is like it's going to be like super reliable, like super super reliable, and it turned out not to be because uh, it was like uh, sometimes not rising, sometimes it went like to the side. And, yeah, and, and the results were not really good because it didn't have the previous version didn't have overflow system, uh, and this one does. You can see it here. So uh, you can see here there's like upper pipe, which uh, feeds the uh, which feeds the water, and there is a lower pipe which you kind of you kind of can see it below, which is the overflow level. And yeah, and it all goes down there and flows back into the tank. Yeah, there is also the water feed system, so I can replenish water without opening the tank. And the tank is also one of the major improvements. Uh, and this system is this like 60 liter like water uh, water tank. Yeah, and you can see the level, and you can see that it's almost empty. You can light some light uh, inside it, and you can see the water is down there. So yeah, I'll have to fill it uh, kind of quickly. Yeah, and there's also there is a new frame. Uh, now it's actually designed, not built from what I had. Um, yeah, it has wheels, has corner braces, and it's pretty sturdy. Um, yeah, you can see the all the wiring, and sensors, and tubes going inside the tank. Uh, yeah, the brain uh, kind of stayed the same. Yeah, there will be at least one more major revision, and 
I will totally rework the brain. Uh, yeah, so I actually installed this additional pH and ppm meter, uh, which I bought on from AliExpress. Yeah, it kind of works well. So in the next version, I'm gonna integrate the same functionality uh, into the uh, into the brain. So I'm gonna integrate pH and ppm sensors, uh, which can be used as a feedback uh, on what's going on with the uh, nutrient solution and also the major thing that I plan to add is the automated uh, nutrient addition uh, yeah yeah so the other thing is mechanical also yeah I installed a new belt uh, yeah, it's, it has bigger teeth and better grip yeah now we have kind of gear and pulley system uh, yeah so the motors went down there like all the um, all the parts are 3D printed on my uh, home printer from uh, from PT Copet. Uh, yeah, some gears. Yeah, what else? Yeah, the, the the lamps, the light system stayed basically the same. I just mm, put them a little bit closer to each other as it works kind of well. And I'm really proud of that part because you can use. Um, you can use kind of any E27 lamps, like plant lamps, right? those are regular LED 10 watt lamps and it works kind of well. Uh, yeah, so in overall, it's really, it, this model has really, uh, it really has good stability because like what I did, uh, apart from fixing some mi minor uh, mechanical problems like the, fall the belt falling off or uh, some loose screws uh, on the pulley gears. Uh, I basically, and like of course adding water and nutrients, I didn't do much. Uh, I just planted the seeds, closed it, and it grew on its own. Uh, adding water and growing, uh, switching the light uh, on some schedule. Uh, yeah, here's the result, which is, uh, I think it's kind of good. Uh, yeah, looks a bit futuristic. And it is. Yeah, so. Mm, yeah. Open the inside. See how much stuff is in there. Yeah. So, yeah. Now it's much more stable. It's kind of portable. You can move it around at least. Mm, yeah. Because in previous version, the canisters were just standing on the floor. Here, everything is from one module. Uh, but you basically just plug into the socket. It works. Yep. So, uh, I can get back to it. Yeah. Here's how it looks like. Yeah. So, thanks for watching.